In this episode of Ham Nation, we visit again with Tim Duffy, K3LR, for some important information on tower safety and an appearance by Jet Jurgensmeyer from Last Man Standing. Stay tuned for Ham Nation. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. By DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. Most in-stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash ham nation. And by Peak PTT. Peak PTT, the leading provider of push-to-talk systems for business communications. For instant, always-on, nationwide communications, visit peakptt.com and use promo code TWIT for 15% off. This is Ham Nation, episode 406 for June 12th, 2019. Jeff Jurgensmeyer from Last Man Standing and Tim Duffy on Tower Safety. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Bob Heil, K9EID, and we welcome you to this show we call Ham Nation, and it's all about ham radio. And we have a really good show tonight. Uh, first of all, we have Jet Jurgensmeyer on. And if you don't know that name, uh, he's the young man that's on Tim Allen's Last Man Standing. And he also uh, just got back a few hours ago from Hollywood. He uh, was at the premiere of Toy Story. He was a part of that. So he's with us. And the other big star is K3LR. Uh, He's going to be with us and uh, tell us about safety and Tower, tower safety is so important. And George is with us tonight, and um, we just we're just going to have a good time. But um, first of all, I'm going to kick it off real real briefly here. I've got a couple of things going on. I had a couple of people in the last month tell me that they built the pine board and they had some hum, and we traced a couple of these down. And guess what? It's in the filament leads. Uh, And I'm going to show you real quickly how simple it is to make this work. Here is what we did. You'll notice down here that the filaments come out of the transformer with those green leads. One goes to the center and we ground the other one. That's the problem. Not always, but in this case, that grounded filament line causes some ground loops and problems. So this is what you have to do. Go into all of your, uh, of your devices, such as the preamp, the power supply and everything, remove that filament from ground so that there's those two green wires that come out of the transformer, they only go to filaments. And that's what you have to do throughout the whole thing. But I, I wanted to let you know, I'll put all this up on the site. All you have to do is go to uh, HeilSound.com. Down, way down at the bottom are all the many, many pages and uh, diagrams. And we'll, we'll have it all there for you. And uh, you get into uh, some other problems, well, uh, just email it to me and I can help you. But um, that's the problem where... Uh, and I've been doing it for years. I ground the uh, one side of the filament transformer and the other one strings through. But some cases, good old ground loops, it happens, it happens. And um, we, um, we want to let everybody know we're watching the chat room tonight because something special is going to happen. Jet is going to join us for that chat room. Uh, Amanda's out watching. Uh, they have quite a party going on at her house I don't know how good the party is because I think the Bruins are losing right now. So it might be a little little quiet, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get it done. But I, uh, I'm i really thrilled that um, we've got Jet on it. And um, everything else that we're doing around here is uh, 
on the fly tonight because we've got a couple of computer problems with some guys. But well, we're all here. George, I see you're here. How are you doing? And uh, I bet you've got some things. Tell me about what's going to happen Friday night, George. Well, Friday night, Bob, um, we're going to be shooting the next Amateur Logic at live.amateurlogic.tv. And I've got all the stuff that uh, we shot at Hamvention this year. You know, we've watched some of it here on Ham Nation, but I've got more and some unusual things that you might not have seen yet. Plus, I took a trip to Mendelssohn's. We talked about that uh, uh, several weeks ago, and I shot some video while there and got a good interview with Sandy Mendelssohn. So I'll have all that Friday night, live.amateurlogic.tv. Uh, come join us if you're not doing anything then. Well, you... Uh uh, you have uh, you have some little side stories that you did at Dayton, or this is this all going to be a, a good uh, arable stuff? <laughs> oh, it, no, it, it's arable stuff, and uh, there's some interesting things some that some rovers did. Uh, I found what I thought was a chicken coop, but it turned out it wasn't. Okay, we'll uh, figure that out. Well, listen, let's see what we got from ICOM. You probably have a word or two, I would think. Contest from home or remotely and create your own band opening with ICOM's newest SDR transceiver, the IC9700. Bring in direct sampling to the UHF VHF weak signal market, the IC9700 all mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features. Dedicated amateur satellite operation, color touchscreen, D Star capability built in, RF direct sampling on the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands, dual independent receivers capable of full duplex operation as well as dual watch, and 100 watts max output power on 2 meters, 75 watts max on 70 centimeters, and 10 watts max on 1.2 gigahertz. The IC7610 is the SDR every ham wants. This high-performance SDR has the ability to pick out the faintest signals even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of a SDR radio. RF direct sampling, 110 dBm RMDR independent dual receivers and dual digicell. The IC7300 is changing the way entry-level HF is designed. This high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design will far exceed your expectations. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. Visit icomamerica.com amateur for more information on all the great ICOM radios. And don't forget to be ham active in June. Participate in both the June VHF contest as well as field day. Submit your logs and see how you did in the pileup. And ICOM invites you to enter the monthly drawing for a great radio, but you need to enter every week after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation and register. You could win some great swag prizes weekly like T-shirts and hats, and, of course, you'll also be entered in the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio for June. That is the ICOM IC2730A Dual Band Dual Watch Mobile Simultaneous VHF UHF, uh, VHF VHF or UHF UHF Receive Rugged Mill Standard 810. It's got a large display on it, uh, built-in weather alert function. There's free CS2730 programming software, and there's an optional Bluetooth board available as well. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this in each episode and register to win. Sign up. Good luck. And don't forget to follow Icom America Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. And we're glad to have our friend Tim Duffy, K3LR, back with us this week and some more important information on tower safety. Hi, Tim. Hello, George. It's great to be here this evening. And, you know, uh, we're about 10 days out from field day. And uh, field day has more participation on the HF bands than any other event during the year. And it's also the time when ham clubs and hams go out and put up towers. 
and uh, they put up lots of antennas. And we want to get everybody really focused on safety here tonight. We want uh, everybody that goes out for field day to be thinking safe. Uh, one of the uh, bonus plans in the uh, field day package is if you have a safety officer. So every field day operation really should have a safety officer. And uh, there's a, a whole sheet of bullet points that the safety officer needs to remember and needs to communicate to the club or the group. So it's very important that we think safe. Every year at field day, somebody gets hurt. Um, and we want to make sure that this year, in 2019, nobody gets hurt. And so we're going to talk about some safety items here this evening. I have a field day story of my own. Uh, back when I was 16 years old, I was participating in a field day. Uh, field day was the first contest I ever got involved in. And, of course, as a 16-year-old, I was the guy that went up the 40-foot tower. And after field day was over, I went up the tower to uh, take the two-element quad down. And a guy wire gave way, and that tower fell over. And I was belted to the top of it. And uh, I was very, very lucky that uh, my injury was just 27 stitches in the back of my head. I lost a lot of brains that day. But seriously, that's not something that I want to see anybody else go through. I spent a week in the hospital, and it was a terrible, terrible accident. Luckily, I'm still here, uh, but... I don't want to see anybody else go through that. So, Victor, why don't you bring up the slides and let's start. This is a presentation that Tim Jellison just gave at Contest University uh, here a few weeks ago in downtown Dayton at the Crown Plaza. It was one of 24 different uh, presentations that was given. Uh, Tim and I have been friends since we were both 12 years old on ADCW, and uh, we've been very close friends, worked together on tower projects, and uh, let's go to the next slide. So one of the things that, and this holds true for not only towers, but push-up masts. And any time that you're maybe uh, shooting antennas over uh, trees, you want to stay away from any power lines. Any power lines means you stay away from those things because there's a lot of things that can go bad uh, when you're around power lines. So, um, you know, you, you don't think it's going to happen, but that, that mast or that antenna can get in touch with a power line, and that can really be a bad situation. So stay away from power lines. One of the things, too, uh, not necessarily in the world of field day, but you don't want to climb crank up towers. That is an, a no-no. You want to have a lift or a crane involved. And by all means, uh, be very careful on ladders. Um, you see a lot of guys take a lot of chances to try and get antennas up and they end up falling and then that means a trip to the emergency room. So we want to make sure that you stay away from hazards. Uh, so safety procedures. First thing, when you go out to a site, um, if you're like George, George likes when he goes out to a field day site, uh, he's off the grid. So he's a long way away from power lines. But there's a lot of field day sites that are around power lines. So you want to check for where the power lines are and stay away from the power lines. Um, if you're doing any climbing, you want to make sure you use the proper harness and lanyards. Um, there's you know, a safety harness, and then there's the lanyard. And uh, you want to make sure that 100% of the time that you are connected to the tower. So there's no free climbing. Absolutely, when you get off the ground, you are connected to the tower all the time. I know it slows you down, but it is the safe way, it is the right way to climb the tower. Anytime that you're doing tower work, everyone, all the ground crew, all the tower climbers, everyone has to have on a hard hat. It's, it's just part of the deal because things will fall and it's very easy to injure somebody. So everyone has to have a hard hat and never, ever ride a rope or a capstan or a hoist uh, this is what got uh, Paul W0AIH in trouble uh, when he was riding a rope and the rope was not uh, of sufficient uh, quality and, uh, and, you know, we know what happened. He, he became a silent key. So you never, ever ride a rope. OSHA says no riding a rope. Don't do it. Uh, I don't care what the circumstance is. Never, ever ride a rope. 
So you want to use a full body harness, and here's why. Um, here's a, a YouTube video that you can watch, and this YouTube video will explain very, very succinctly why you want to use a full body harness. So if you're looking at the uh, replay, you want to go to this YouTube link, and this is a good thing to watch. So the, the, the tie-off point is very critical, and uh, here's a, a picture of a Roan 25 tower, and these braces, the horizontals and diagonals, are not strong enough. You really have to go around the leg. So if you try to tie off with your fall arrest lanyard on these small braces, you this is not the right thing to do. You want to make sure that you don't do this. The right way to do it is to go around the leg. And you can see how we've got the, uh, the whole clamp goes around the leg. This is the safe way to do it. And so here's Tim demonstrating the proper use of the fall arrest, which is the blue, and the, the red is his uh, climbing belt. So in case that climbing belt gives way, the fall arrest lanyard is in place so that it would catch him. It won't be pleasant, but it will save his life. Notice he's got his hard hat on and he's ready to go. Even if you're uh, if you'll not be using the fall arrest lanyard, that full body harness will aid in rescuing you from the tower should that become necessary. And we don't want to have that happen, but if it happens and you have to have the fire department or somebody come out, that fall arrest lanyard and the full body harness is really, really important. So there's two pieces to this. And if you can get a, a, a strap with a belt, or I'm sorry, with a, a seat, that's really good because that way you can kind of take some weight off of your your uh, feet and you can ro relax a little bit if you're not doing uh, climbing or doing the tower work itself. You don't want to be this guy. This is not safe at all. So the climbing method for Roan Towers, you want to use two positioning lanyards and one of which will always be around the tower at any time. And so here's uh, Tim demonstrating the, uh, the lanyard around the tower. Um, you want to make sure, again, that you're using the legs and not the cross braces. Notice how he's got uh, the lanyard uh, wrapped around one of the legs so that it can't slip. That's very important, too, especially when you're on the top of the tower. Um, I, I do know a guy, but he's now a silent key, that did not do this. And when he was on the top of the tower, the lanyard came off the top and uh, he did not have a fall arrest on, and that was the end. So you want to make sure that you don't let the lanyard slip over the top. And it's really a good idea. I'm seeing more and more guys do this, that they hire a tower crew uh, to do their tower work. And uh, you want to make sure you only use certified climbers. Um, and uh, there, are, there are several certification uh, companies and uh, if you want it, you can go and become a certified climber yourself. This is a really good, safe thing to do if you're going to do a lot of tower work. But if you hire a tower crew, make sure that they have been trained and they're properly insured and bonded and that they're a certified climber. And above all, follow the rules. We don't want any silent keys. At field day and beyond, no silent keys always be safe. So there you go. That's that's the story on tower safety. I want you to be scared. I really do. I want you to be safe out there this year. Don't take chances and uh, make sure that you do the right thing all the time and we don't have any trouble this year at field day. So 73 and good luck and we'll hear you on the air. Don, take it away. ARRL Field Day 2019, now only a few days away. Time for one last check to make sure you're fully prepared. And your one-stop shop is DX Engineering. They have everything you need for an outstanding weekend on the air. From rig expert antennalizers, an invaluable tool for testing antennas and feed lines while setting up your field day operation. Choose from several models with frequency ranges as broad as 0 0.1 to 1,400 megahertz. They can also be used to test coaxial cable assemblies, measure the capacitance or inductance of reactive loads. Simple battery-powered operation and a large display gives you easy use in the field. And graphic representation of SWR impedance loss and more. And now available in two Bluetooth versions that allow you to work in conjunction with a smartphone, tablet, netbook, or a laptop. 
and simplify your field day setup with Pro 2 equipment racks from iPortable. The Pro 2 equipment rack system gives you a rugged travel and flight case with DC power distribution points, speaker and rack shelving, plenty of room for all kinds of stuff in there like a radio or two, plus power supply and tuner. The front panel contains volume controls, coax plugs, fuse panel, USB ports, power poles, and a headphone jack. And they're compatible with virtually any radio setup, available in four or six rack units. And, of course, DX Engineering has all your wire antenna needs in one place from top brands like EA Multiband Wire Antennas. They're arranged in a unique fan style that allows each band to uh, remain separate from the others, the dipoles. Also, soda beams are pre-assembled wire antenna kits. They're built for easy deployment. The Bandhopper multiband portable dipole antenna features a high-efficiency full-size half-wave dipole on each band. Buckmaster's multiband off-center fed dipole HF antennas are built with high-quality components for years of trouble-free operating. They're available in four, seven, or eight band operation. Your field day headquarters, DX Engineering, ships faster than anybody else in the industry. Most orders placed by 10 p.m. Eastern are shipped the same day. Proven products, expert advice, DX Engineering is helping you shrink the globe. Request your catalog or shop online 24-7 at dxengineering.com slash hamnation. And we thank DX Engineering for their support of Ham Nation. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2171. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, June 12th, 2019. In Mexico, amateur radio support on HF and VHF across the border became part of the massive support network as firefighters and others fought to contain wildfires. Mexico has suffered a brutal fire season as hot, dry weather led to more than 100 wildfires in 17 states by the middle of last month. In one hard-hit region of Mexico, cooperating hams on both sides of the U.S. border provided vital communication support in a remote area south of Monterrey, Mexico. By May 20th, a small group of Mexican radio operators was being delivered by helicopter into the fire zone daily until the storms rolled in. The use of Windlink was particularly valuable because emails could be sent and received directly at the fire scene. Communication tools also included high-speed capable VARAHF, a weak signal software. Tom Whiteside, N5TW, just across the border in Texas, provided an instrumental link for the mission by turning his 40-meter and 20-meter antenna arrays in the direction of the operators for their use. The HAM's involvement ended on May 31st. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Kent Peterson, KC0, DGY. AMSAT is taking field day to a higher level. While the ARRL sponsors the terrestrial version of the event, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation will be operating its own field day, satellite style. The exchange is the same as for field day on the ground. Hams are encouraged to make use of analog and digital satellites. Yes, that includes the International Space Station if it's operating voice at the time you're on the air. However, AMSAT is setting a limit of one QSO per FM satellite, and that includes the ISS, to avoid issues with congestion. No points will be given for contacts beyond the one allowed for each single channel FM satellite. The AMSAT website has posted a table listing satellites that will be operational during field day. To see the list and a full set of rules, visit amsat.org slash field hyphen day. AMSAT also advises hams to keep an eye on Twitter for the status of AO92. The satellite may be in LV mode during the first part of field day. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Of course, Field Day isn't always about scoring points. It's about education, too. Although contacts made using Internet-assisted modes don't count for points during ARRL Field Day, here's a way to score big points with Field Day visitors. Make some Field Day contacts on DMR using the QuadNet Array, which is accessible by D-Star, Brandmeister, DMR+, and Fusion. Jeff, VE6DV, said that traffic on the QuadNet array during last year's field day was a big hit with lots of field day stations and provided non-licensed visitors to field day activations in Canada and the United States, a way to make their first on-air contacts with the help of a licensed control operator. Jeff wrote in an email, quote, since field day is as much about public outreach as it is about the final point total, having a station that allows you to demonstrate all aspects of the hobby to the public is a great way to teach visitors about what we can do, end quote. Anyone with questions can contact the QuadNet administrators at admins at openquad.net. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jack Parker, W8ISH. 
And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Kent Peterson, KC0DGY, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, Jack Parker, W8ISH, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Here's your solar update from Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW. First looking at the solar storm conditions and Aurora five-day outlook. We have a finger-like coronal hole rotating into the Earth strike zone that could bump us up to storm conditions momentarily, but they won't last long, especially at mid-latitudes. High-latitude Aurora photographers might be in for a show over the next few days, though. After that, expect unsettled conditions to remain easily through the weekend before things settle down. Switching to the solar flare and particle radiation storm facing sun as they rotate off the west limb over to the backside. Expect solar flux to drop back into the high 60s as we enter next week. That means radio propagation should decrease on Earth's day side just a bit. However, we are getting a boost from sporadic E and some meteor dust right now, so this is helping keep propagation from tanking too much. Expect these conditions to continue easily over the next week and possibly two before we get another chance at a boost in the solar flux. As always, make sure you follow her on Twitter at Tamitha Scove and check her out online at spaceweatherwoman.com. All right, we're, uh, we're going to be sure to make some of these field day contacts he's talking about. That's, that's going to be really fun. Well, tonight's a really special night, especially for me and I'm sure for everybody else when you meet our next guest because he's something really special in his his family uh, support this guy. So let's get him in here. It's KE0 UWZ Jet Jergsmeyer from Last Man Standing. Hi, Jet. How are you, buddy? Hey, Bob. I'm I'm good. How about you? We're, we're good. We're very good. And you guys, you just got off an airplane. So I appreciate you uh, uh, making time to stop by and say hi to everybody. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing on on the uh, the air with with Tim and and how you got there. That's one of the big questions I always have is how that all come about. Well, I I really just kind of fell in love with it thanks to John Amato on the set. He the there's a real ham radio on the set in Tim's office, and every night before a taping we we get on this radio and we talk to fans all across the country. And I kind of thought that was really neat. I get to talk to people all around the world. That's, that's pretty cool. So eventually John was like, Hey, you and your dad should sign up and take your tests to get your license. So you can do this. I was like, okay, sure. So my dad and I started studying and just fell in love with it. And so happy to be a part of this amateur radio family. We're so happy (laughs) you as a part of Amateur Radio. You're one of the great flag wavers, and it it helps some of the the youth get involved in this also. And we have uh, have some nice slides here of you uh, when you passed your your tests. uh, Yes, I was very – that picture of me holding up my – like certificate right there i was so nervous r- taking that picture because i had just passed the test and my hands were like sweating taking the test because i was like i really want to pass this what am i going to do if i don't pass it so being able to pass it in that picture just i was so happy what you would do like most of us is i think it was a f- i took it four times before i passed my first test so we're all involved there well you really well, had a at, Look at uh, that. We were matching there. We planned that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we totally good. did. And I appreciate you stopping by. And well, thank you. You, uh, you just got off the airplane. Can you tell us <laughs> yes, sir. where you came from and what you did yesterday and why. All righty. So yesterday, last night, I should say, I was at the Toy Story 4 premiere which is really cool. And for those of you that don't know, what are you doing? Tim Allen is Buzz Lightyear. Come on. Everybody should know that. So it was really cool. I got to see Tim and say hey to him, talk about the show a little bit and getting to see him next season, which is going to be awesome. And the movie was great. And I, I actually wasn't in the movie. I was invited because I'm on Disney's new animated series, which comes out on the 14th this month called Tots. So that was I got invited for that, and I saw a lot of my Disney friends, a lot of kids that I knew, 
and some pretty cool adults that I was not expecting to see there. I got to see quite a bit of the cast, which was really neat growing up on Toy Story. So, Well, you, uh, you have a, a tremendous future in front of you. Let's see, is Gordon with us? Uh, Gordon West, are you with us here, Gordo? I'm sure you have a I few am. And, uh, gentlemen, <laughs> good to see you, and uh, you bet, last man standing. Um, Jet, we had a lot of questions from adult uh, instructors, and that is, how can we attract more kids your age into ham radio? What, what did you think was uh, the big attraction? Well, I think all of us kids are so attached to our devices and social media nowadays. And John, when, he, when we were learning about ham radio, he actually put it in a very simple way. This was the first social media. Honestly, this is how everybody talked to each other, which is really cool. So I think if we can show kids that you can literally talk to people anywhere in the world, that's amazing. Why would you sit and type something out when you can literally talk to them? I think that's pretty neat. And it's 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 a lot cooler coming through a radio and saying, I have a call sign. My call sign's is K-E-0-U-W-Z. Like it, being able to have <laughs> that recognition in the family. I think it's really cool. I got to talk to a guy in the UK. It was it, through D-Star. I thought that was really neat. I talked to somebody in the uk what i couldn't do that any other day but i can with my ham radio <laughs> <laughs> oh that is uh that is just great and uh that will be a good lesson for all of us to get more kids in the ham radio because jet this saturday after you re, uh recover from all your back and forth trips across the country uh this saturday is kids day and uh, one of the uh, kids' station is the Wichita Amateur Radio Club. They're going to be at the Learning Lab and the Exploration Place. And uh, Wichita, call sign K1D, as in kid. So I hope all of you have a chance to get out there. So, Jet, let me turn you back over to Bob, because I know he probably has more questions for you. And, Jet, great to see you. Thanks for it's pushing our hobby into the next year and next gear. Bob? Well, Gordo, that uh, that brings me to the big question about how did you uh, how did you get uh, in the set of Last Man Standing? How did that come about, Jet? Uh, well, it was really it started off like kind of any other job where I went in for the first audition with the casting directors, and I always like when I can being able to go in person instead of sending in a tape. I think that kind of has a better impression, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it started off with just the simple audition and then the callbacks turning into producer sessions till eventually uh, we had to negotiate contracts and everything and sign those. And I had the screen test for the, uh, the, the, uh, the Fox, basically. <laughs> I had the screen test for Fox. Um, and it's funny because my parents and I actually became genuine fans of the show about three months before I got the audition. And so we were, I think we were actually sitting down watching the show. And my mom said, hey, you have an audition. I said, cool, what's it for? She said, last man standing. And we all kind of sat there and went, wait, isn't that what's on the TV right now? And sure enough, we were watching Tim Allen on last man standing when I got the audition. So it was all kind of nerve wracking because I really wanted to be a part of the show. And when I got that final call, it was like, all right, welcome to the family. It was all I kind of I got I got to take a little breath because I had been working on and getting trying to do the auditions for probably two or three months. So it all took quite a while. But when it, when it was all said and done, I was very happy. We are very proud of you, and I'm sure your parents are. Um, I might ask this. How old are you? I'm 14 years old, so I turned 15 in November, November 27th. Uh -huh. that, that means you're probably looking at, are you going to have a red Mustang or <laughs> a blue Corvette, right? All right. I'm glad you asked that because my parents are like, you're not getting a car. You can drive one of ours if you want. I was like, <laughs> All right. my dream, my dream car, though, is actually a blue Ford pickup. So, there you go. which is cool because right. uh, 
who plays my dad on the show, he actually has a gray Ford pickup, which is kind of funny. So maybe one day we'll have something in common on our cars. Hey, hey, Gordo, if he gets a pickup truck, he can come help us move all that gear for field day. What do you think, Gordo? Well, yeah, and uh, Jet, you'll blend right in with that pickup, or the pickup will show off your skills at entertaining uh, Country Western. Is that correct, Jet? Uh, yes, sir. So I, I'm I, I'm hoping to get that pickup because it, it, I've wanted one since I was really, really little. <laughs> oh, that is terrific. And for your Country Western uh, gigs, uh, do you sing? Do you play an instrument? Yes, sir. I sing and I play the guitar. And I usually, if it's a longer performance, I'll have my uncle play the guitar with me as well. He's a phenomenal guitar player. And it's re it kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off because I know that he's not going to mess up. Oh, that's super, Jet. Well, Jet... All of us on Ham Nation are so proud of you, John Amadeo, for uh, uh, getting you into the role and Tim Allen working with you. So we wish you the best. We hope you have fun on this Saturday's Kids Day. And by the way, if you plan to do digital, Don Arnold uh, tells me that uh, Terry, November 8, Lima, November, a D-Star Gateway expert, has everything in case you run into a problem. So uh, look up uh, Terry. November 8, Lima, November. So, Jeff, what an exciting hobby where we can just volunteer people to help everybody out. Uh, Bob, what do you think about this young man? Well, I, I'm just, I, we're on the uh, beginning of an incredible career because he's not only an actor, but he's a, a wonderful, a, a wonderful uh, singer, no matter if it's country western or what. But I've heard a few things, and we're very honored that uh, he's uh, he's doing this through one of our PR35 microphones. And it's going to be so much fun to watch you uh, go through all of this. And we'll be right there with you, Jet. That's for sure. Have you got, you had an album coming up? Do you have anything like that that we might want to watch for? Yes, sir. I'm very glad that you asked that. My album will be out on the 21st of this month. So everybody, please go and check it out. I'm, I'm very excited. It's my very first album that I've released. And I wrote one of the songs on it with a good friend of mine, Olivia McKenna, whose album is actually out right now. So you can check her out. Um, I, I hope you all enjoy the music. And I actually am also performing at Summerfest in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee. <laughs> in milwaukee yeah. in july so if anybody is around there come on i'd love to see y'all on family day Summerfest is a big deal we uh, we've done that for years we've some of the groups that we used to tour with so you'll have a lot of fun there so i'm, I'm be, excited what you want to do is we got to keep a close watch on that when that's released we'll have uh, we'll have some of that on here and uh, let everybody uh, know where they can get it and so on well i really well, appreciate so that I'm I'm thrilled that you came by, but got one other favor. We're going to keep you here to the end. Only got a little bit more time. Gordo's got back, and the chat room is going to have some questions. Can you stick around for a little bit? Of course. I'd love to talk to some people. Yes, I figured that. All right. Well, let's go back to Gordo, and uh, then when we're finished, we're going to come, come to the chat room part and You'll, uh, you'll be inundated with questions, I'm sure. So, Gordo, take it away. Thanks so much, Chet. All right. Well, we're uh, ready, Bob. And I hope all of you get an opportunity to work uh, this coming Saturday with all the kids that are out there that need to get the enthusiasm that Jet has to uh, see Ham Radio continue to grow. Um, I actually have no short shots uh, tonight, Bob, uh, just due to time. So if I may come back to you, let's go ahead and uh, go back to Bob. Thanks very much. It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite an honor to have someone in like Jet being an amateur radio operator and waving the flag for the youth. Let's go take a listen right now to Peak PTT. I want to talk to you about keeping in touch in a commercial business setting, and that means Peak PTT. Peak PTT is the leading provider of push-to-talk systems for business communications. Company cell phones are not only expensive, they can also be huge time wasters for employees. You can boost productivity and cut down costs today with Peak PTT. 
Peak provides advanced IP-based push-to-talk systems for small, medium, and enterprise businesses. You can leverage the Internet, cellular data, and Wi-Fi networks to transmit voice over the Internet. Peak PTT provides instant talk, location monitoring, and emergency alert notifications. Local, nationwide, and worldwide coverage. The rugged devices are made to withstand dirt, water, and extreme temperatures. And no contracts. And billing is month to month. Less than one second connection time. You can connect with hundreds of users at once or talk privately with anyone in your group. Central tracking and communication center from any PC. Real-time GPS tracking for accurate and complete visibility. The K2 PTT system is great for small and medium-sized businesses. This includes an affordable walkie-talkie styled handset, the PTT 84G, iOS and Android apps, and PC dispatch software for device, location, tracking. The Everest PTT system capable of handling deployments of any size. This includes the PTT 584G rugged handset, five nines of network availability, lower latency rates than some of the most significant players in the industry. PC-based dispatch console to locate devices on demand and view on a map. Push-to-talk calls last an average of about 15 seconds versus 50 seconds for traditional calls. Get in touch faster and operate more efficiently with Peak PTT. Visit peakptt.com and use promo code TWIT at checkout for 15% off. That's peakptt.com. Use promo code TWIT for 15% off. And we thank Peak PTT for their support of Ham Nation. All right. Well, what we want to do is... uh, want to look and see if we can get some questions up. George, are you with us here? Yeah, I, I didn't know if uh, if you got your back in here. We had a little defugally. There we go. George, have you, uh, you got any questions you've been doing from uh, the chat room? Well, I was watching the chat room here, Bob, and everyone was, um, was commenting along. And I think, uh, Jet, you started something with the talk on the pickup trucks there. Uh, <laughs> so I want to ask ask you on that what a ford or a chevy or a dodge which which way are you leaning a ford f-150 as of right now that is what i would really love to get it's fords are kind of in my family everybody has one yeah my my father had a blue f-150 and oh, it's so such a good truck. I know where you're coming from. I have a little Nissan myself, but it's it's not blue; it's white. So we we won't talk about it. We had <laughs> one other question here uh, from Laquasa. She wanted to know which voice are you doing in the Disney show? I will be Pip the Penguin. So I'm the little penguin guy, kind of the leader of the whole whole group, if you know what I mean. Cool. And you've been in a number of other shows too. Just just name a, a couple of things that that you've been in there, other than Last Man Standing. Uh, well, as far as animation goes, I've been on Stinky and Dirty for Amazon, Bubble Guppies, and Shimmer and Shine for Nickelodeon. Uh, I was actually in Ferdinand, which was had John Cena and Peyton Manning. That was that was really a cool movie to voice on. Um, but as other than Last Man Standing, I was on Will and Grace and Hot in Cleveland. And I was actually in Adventures in Babysitting for the Disney Channel, which was their 100th DCOM, Disney Channel original movie. So it was kind of a big deal and a lot of fun to do. Uh, another question here, and I, I'm not sure exactly. Well, I know what he meant when he asked it, but Eric Dutton wants to know, do, do you play both kinds of music, country and western? <laughs> yes, sir. I, w- I would say probably because I- good music's good music. That's what we always say. And it doesn't really matter the genre. If it's good music, I'll play it. George, Anything from George Strait to Thomas Rhett. I love good country western music. Oh, and there, there's, there's uh, This Is Your Moment, my newest single out right now. Cool. I will have to go check that out. Well, it's uh, always good to meet another musician, and glad you're having fun doing that. And and that it's in the family. If your uncle's playing too, that's that's great. Um, well, Jet, that's all the questions I really have out of there. You you really stirred up quite a uh, a chat room on the Ford pickups there. So uh, yeah, they're <laughs> well, they're great. Everybody they're going loves with good Ford. Pickup. Yeah, everybody they, loves they like to Ford. 
All and right, the well, Raptors. You, you know what? Look at the I've, Raptor. had, I've had a lot of people ask me, now, would you go with a Ford Raptor? And I don't mind the look of the Raptor, but I think I would just stick with the classic Ford F-150. I, I don't know. I, I guess it's just me being a person that doesn't like a whole lot of change. I just like the classic trucks, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, we're glad that you could join us tonight. And uh, when you get ready for some antenna suggestions, because we know you're going to want to put an antenna on that pickup, come back and, oh, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll, I'll, I'll Just a couple more years, hopefully. I'll have that. <laughs> pickup truck in no time yeah there you go there you go uh, a, a great question that marty asked is what is your favorite last man standing show favorite la oh that, that's a tough one uh if we're talking about ones that i've been in i would say the one where um well, it's kind of have two because the one where Tim got to shove me down on the ground a whole bunch of times, that was a lot of fun to do. It was a good episode for Boyd, and it, I thought it was really funny. I thought it got quite a few laughs. Um, but the other one would have to be when Mandy and Kyle were watching me. I thought that one was a lot of fun to do because Molly McCook and Kristoff, they're just they're so fun and they're such great actors that they were so easy to play off of and make jokes. And I thought it was, I thought we were kind of a good trio working together. I thought it was pretty fun. We might have to have some more Mandy, Kyle, and Boyd. <laughs> well, you, you're going to have fun no matter what you do when you're on that set, I'm sure. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, questions, that questions that Sarah and I ask. Uh, how did you get started into acting? And at what age? How did that all come about, Jet? I'm I'm glad that you asked that. I hope we have a little bit of time because it's kind of a long answer. <laughs> My parents owned a restaurant here in Nashville, where I am right now, uh, when I was little, called the Nashville Palace. And when I was three, I would I started getting up on stage and I'd sing and I'd tell jokes for people and kind of do what I love doing: talk to a crowd and make people laugh. That's what I loved doing. Uh, and we had some friends, the Mandrell family, uh, Barbara, Louise, and Erlene. Their mom, Mary Mandrell, actually said, hey, you guys should try acting with Jet. And my parents were like, all right, sure. So I got my agent out here in Nashville, Mark Block at the Block Agency. Mark, if you are watching this, hi. <laughs> uh, and I fell in love with it. I started acting when I was four and fell in love with it. It's so much fun. I, I get to entertain people. That's so cool. And now that I'm on a comedy, I always like to say that I love to see and make people smile. So if I get to make people smile with being funny and looking silly and dressing silly, then I'll do it because I love putting a smile on somebody's face because you never know if a smile could change that person's day. So sorry for the long answer. <laughs> I guess one thing you have to look at is if you're going to start out, Nashville's a really good place to start because you have so many possibilities there, and uh, you you are so blessed to, to have this great talent. Well, we're blessed to have you, and we will have you back a lot of other times, and I will, I really want to keep a watch when you get your album out, and we want to make that a big deal, so let me know what happens there. But All I right. think 21st. It comes out on the 21st. Much. Thanks to your mom and dad, because you had to fly in, and you weren't there very long, and bingo, you're on the air, so I know that you're probably probably jet lagged and so on. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for being there. And we really appreciate you supporting amateur radio the way you do jet. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Gordo. You're awesome. I hope to see you all soon. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all so much. Okay. That's excellent. Ah, wonderful. Well, we've had a great time here tonight. We've learned a lot of things about tower safety and 
hey, spending time with uh, with a Hollywood star, <laughs> even though he's 14, he is a Hollywood star and uh, going to be driving a Ford pickup before long. So let's uh, see how that all turns out. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. I hope you've had as much fun as we have bringing this to you. And uh, next week, we'll be right back here, same place on the good old Twit, Twit Network. Appreciate Leo Laporte for giving us the time and all of our sponsors that keep it going. Because if it wasn't for ICOM, DX Engineering, and tonight PTTP, we wouldn't be here. So thanks so much to those people. Keep the cards and letters coming, and we'll talk to you next week right here on Ham Nation. Bye-bye for now.